Hey guys, what you're about to see in this video is for educational purposes only. Please don't do anything stupid or illegal. I'm not going to be responsible for your actions. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to this video about antivirus. Now before we get started, I just want to make one thing clear. We're going to discuss the traditional antivirus. And while we're not going to discuss the next-gen antivirus or an EDR, XDR or any other type of endpoint security solution, it is important to mention that the core of the traditional antivirus is still something that can be found in current modern-day antivirus or next-gen antivirus softwares. So let's dive right in. So first we're going to assume we have a hard drive and that we have certain files on that hard drive, some might be malicious, some not, and we run a simple antivirus scan. This can be a quick scan or a full scan, we're not going to cover the differences right now, but let's just say that the antivirus is going to scan every file on that disk. For every file scanned, there's going to be a hash. And if you're not sure what hashes are, I do recommend you go back and check out my video, What is Hashing? Now once that hash is found, the antivirus will try to match that hash with its own database. The antivirus database is full of hashes of known malicious files. In fact, when we update the antivirus, most of the time we're not updating the software itself, the policy or anything else. We're just adding more and more of these malicious hashes. So the first step is very simple. The antivirus will try to match the hash found with a hash in its database. If there is a match, then of course we'll get a detection. The antivirus might choose to delete the file or quarantine the file which is really just encrypting it in a certain container on the disk to keep it from spreading or doing anything malicious. Another way to go about this, and again most traditional antiviruses do this as well, is to simply look inside the file. So again, we'll prompt a scan, and it's going to look inside the files. Now this is what the inside of an executable file looks like. We basically see three different columns here. The first one on the left is called the offset which is really the location in memory of a specific line of code that needs to run at a certain time. The second and the third column are basically the same thing. It's the code that needs to run. In the second column, we can find the hex representation of that code. And in the third column, we can find the ASCII representation. Now the antivirus can look for a certain string in that code. And again, the string can match what's already in the antivirus database. So much like we have a database of malicious hashes, we also have malicious strings. And again, once a match is found, we get a detection for the entire file. Let's see what that looks like in the demo. So for our example, I have Lockbit2, which is a ransomware that came out roughly six months ago. And the first thing I'm going to do is extract the hash. Let's use the SHA-1. And instead of searching in our own local antivirus database, we'll use VirusTotal as an online database for malicious hashes. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with VirusTotal, in a nutshell, VirusTotal has a huge database of malicious strings, malicious URLs, malicious files, etc. It is a tool that is being used by researchers worldwide and also retrieves and provides intelligence for different cybersecurity vendors, as we'll see in a minute. Now, as you can see, I can upload a file to get the hash or even to run it through a virus total sandbox. I can simply copy a URL or I can perform a search based again on a URL, IP address, domain, or a file hash. Now, since I already have the hash, I'm just gonna paste it in here and hit enter. Now, VirusTotal did something very similar to what the antivirus will do locally. So the antivirus has a local database, it's usually the DAT file that has all of these malicious strings. VirusTotal did something very, very similar and simply ran this hash in a known malware database. 
So we can see that 53 out of 66 vendors flag this as malicious. And we can see that some of them even know to say that this is Lockbit 2.9, which is the exact version of the ransomware that I've uploaded. We can of course get more information, such as the original file name, the size, and when it was first detected or first uploaded to VirusTotal. But we're not going to cover VirusTotal in this video, I just wanted to show you how this database works. Again, even though it's VirusTotal and not a local antivirus, the concept remains the same. Now, I do have Windows Defender installed here since this is a Windows 10 machine, which means that I can use Defender Check. Defender Check is a great project on GitHub. I recommend you go and check it out. And with Defender Check, I can simply extract the malicious strings from the Lockbit2 sample that I have. So again, I'm going to comb through the file. I'm going to get all the strings and then Defender check is going to match that against the local database that I have uh, on my PC since again I'm using Windows Defender. It's going to analyze it, trigger an alert. Again, what it's doing is reaching into the Defender database and trying to see where exactly is that malicious string because a regular scan is not going to tell us that. And here we go. So we got this. This is the malicious string that Defender is using to detect LockB2. Now we can go into the file and see exactly where this resides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy, let's say this first row here. I'm gonna open a hex editor and again, drag and drop LockB in. And there it is. So here's the signature. It's exactly what Defender Check found for us. Now look at this. It actually says here, Lockbit 2.0 Ransom. Now what we can do is simply change the signature. How do we do it? It's actually fairly simple. Well, at least in theory. Because what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to put all zeros here. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what I'm doing right now, again, hex and ASCII are different representations of the same code. So by changing one, I'm changing the other. I can put here, for example, 61, 62, 63. And you can see that each one of these has a representation in ASCII. So let's save the file. And I'm going to try to run Defender Check once again. Not against this, this is just a backup. So let's make sure we're getting the right copy here. Yeah. Let's run the check again. We got rid of the signature, right? There are definitely situations where there is more than just one signature to a file. And we'll see that in a minute. So even though I removed the previous signature, we're still going to find a new signature now. So here we go. There's another signature here, and this time we can't even read the ASCII. Now to keep a long story short, I've actually done this before. There are three different signatures in this particular sample. And though I was able to change the first one because it was just text, I can't really change the others. If I go back now to the hex editor and change what we're seeing here, yes, Defender won't be able to pick it up anymore, but we will also ruin the functionality of the file. So this is a very basic video just to kind of understand the concept. But when you do learn about defense evasion or AV evasion, you do learn how to change these in a way that won't destroy the functionality of the file, but just hide it from antivirus software. But again, that's beyond the scope of this video. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. For more news and updates, visit TomBH.com. See you next time.